Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Melatone Amps. And in this first episode, we're going to do a little walkthrough of the Universal Rocket 6N1P preamp and, uh, and get organized so we can start building really quickly. So this is a, about as simple a preamp as you can design. And don't let that fool you. And don't let the small package fool you. This is an absolutely great sounding preamp. And it's a high gain preamp. And high gain just means that we, we, we get more voltage out than would be normal. So tip it's very flexible. Yeah. yeah. So, and we'll go into more details about that throughout the build series. But in this episode, we're just going to do a quick overview. So the, the gain stage is, um, can be a number of tubes. Right now we have the 6N1P-EV made by Voskhod and they use a rocket symbol. So that's actually where the name came from. It's just an amazing sounding preamp tube. It's a twin triode. So one half of the triode is one channel and the other half is the other channel. But if you're interested in all the different tubes that you can roll in this, check out your schematic. It should have an up-to-date list of everything that you can run. Yeah, and in fact, uh, thanks for mentioning the schematics, Charles. So you should get out of your build manual um, your power supply schematic and your preamp schematic. They will correspond with the build at every stage. And in fact, if, there's a, if there is a discrepancy between the build series and the schematic that you receive it, the schematic that you receive takes priority we sometimes update things over time make small changes uh, so always follow the schematic that you have right and of course here on the on the uh, preamp schematic is a list of compatible tubes and these are all the gain stage tubes the cathode follower that we've chosen is the amazing 6n6p and um, it, it, it just functions so brilliantly as a cathode follower, even though it can do lots of things mm -hmm. uh, really well, that there's no reason to roll this tube. You uh, can, though. There are some versions of them made by Photon and NEVZ. And there's the Dash I version, which also does work. But um, really, a lot of the changes you're going to get are from rolling this gain tube. Okay, let's keep moving here. So there's two pairs of RCA inputs on a simple switch and this little micro switch is actually a very high quality switch so don't let the size fool you and in the center position is a detente position so there's, there's no signal passing through to the circuit then that's handy if you have to do a change on this side on the input side you can just basically shut it off um, without having to turn the amp off. On the output side, you have a pair of RCA jacks and you have a bypass switch. This is really cool because it'll change the gain of the amp and it'll change the sound a little bit or the tone. And we'll talk when we get later into the build, we'll, there's actually going to be an op, essentially an operating episode and we'll talk more about that. Mm -hmm. Now, b this is the first production prototype build and for that we used a, a bright gold RCA jack for um, all of you getting kits and including the kit we're going to build together we actually I mean that's a good point we we build kit number one yep so which, we use all the same parts that you'll be receiving in the mail and hopefully have in front of you right now in fact what we do is we just take one of the kits that's prepared for for builders uh, out of inventory yep and so we'll be using basically the same parts. Mm -hmm. But back to the RCAs, the ones that we'll be shipping are actually a matte or sort of a tumbled. So they aren't quite as shiny and we think it looks better with the whole amplifier. Yeah, and in fact, I have some here, Charles. So let me just grab one for us. So, so that's how they look. Yeah, and we think this is a much better fit for Charles's uh, labeling, which is, oh, it almost looks gold, but in fact, it's bright copper, isn't it? Uh, actually, I think it does have a thin layer of gold on it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 
No wonder it costs so much. <laughs> okay, so let's quickly move along here. So back here we have our power transformer underneath the cover. We have the screws out just so that we can show it off to you here. And this is a wonderful R-Core transformer that we love using in our preamps. Yeah, it's a custom, custom build from the manufacturer uh, to uh, suit the specifications of the amp. And R-Core transformers are just, they're great. They're, they're low noise. They're sort of a halfway uh, technology between a standard EI, which is a plate transformer, which is the vast majority of transformers ever made are EI types, and a toroidal. Uh, so it's sort of the best of both worlds. Okay, let's take a quick look at the front here. There's just a simple volume control on the front, and um, on the back you have an IEC in, with your switch and a built-in fuse and uh, you you'll have labels depending on whether you're in a high voltage mains region or a low voltage um, and this is a universal transformer so it doesn't matter where you are in the world you can wire this quite easily and we'll show you how for either um, 120 or uh, 230 okay. volts. It's really only a difference of two wires that just have to be changed. Yeah, and there's quite a range of voltages, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay, well, how about we flip this over and take a look inside. Okay, so here's the bottom. Now we've pulled all the, the chassis screws. One of the things that is quite interesting about the chassis of the modern line um, is that it's a unified design. So every component uh, basically links up with every other component, helping to reinforce. It's very structurally rigid, it's very strong. I like to call it the sandwich build. Yeah, and that means that the the um, the preamp is lighter than it would be, and um, as a result it's less expensive, it's less expensive to ship, um, but it doesn't affect um, the quality of the sound in any way. In fact, um, it's extremely well shielded because of the way these panels are made. They have copper on both faces. So yep. now it's a unified board and Charles does just a brilliant job of designing these boards. It'll be a really quick build, uh, even for uh, relatively new beginners. In fact, well, Charles, you're a pretty experienced builder, but how long did it take you to build this first production prototype? Uh, about half a day. Yeah. Yeah. So I think five hours start to finish. And that was without a, a guide leading me and without any experience and taking my time. So. And we'd never built one like this before. Yeah. So, so that's... We're, <laughs> we're hoping this is going to take something like a weekend for an inexperienced builder to put together. Yeah. Now, the important thing is to remember to take your time and do each and every segment properly. Mm -hmm. um, it, it'll result in a nicer build, possibly it'll sound even better. And uh, it's just, you know, it's, it is such a quick build that there's no reason not to take your time. Back here, you've just got the IEC and the connections to the, um, to the transformer on top. You've got a big choke here that, that will filter um, the power supply and the, you've got a couple of jumpers in here that is that you're looking at that's the AC filaments over here you've got the volume pot this is a Blue Alps they're really um, great sounding uh, reasonably affordable volume pots and because the signal passes through them it's really important to not go cheap on stuff like this and all these yellow guys you see here these are coupling capacitors now as we build, we're going to actually talk about the various aspects of the build, the circuit, the components in a little bit more detail. But before we start building, let's get organized. Okay, so in the box, you should have this smaller box of small components here, and you should leave almost everything inside of here to start. We'll pull them out as we need them, but we do need to pull a couple of the small parts bags here. So this one, and these small paper envelopes. And we're going to get those organized into one of these 
lovely egg cartons. You can use anything you like, but we like these because they're accessible and easy to find and they work great for it. And they're free. Yeah. Okay, so, well, let's get sorting and then we'll show you how we like to sort them all out so you can, you can have an idea so that you can do your own sort. Okay, so we've got all the hardware and small uh, components other than electrical parts sorted out into our egg crate. Now you can do this any way you want. Uh, you can use any kind of a tray. If you've got um, some plastic um, fisherman uh, tackle trays that are free, um, that free works great. Or... Yeah, almost anything. The main thing is to get everything sorted um, so that you can have a good organized workspace. That I can't tell you how much of a difference it makes to take your time, be organized, and it'll avoid mistakes in the future. Okay, well, Charles has got all the electrical components sorted. Let's take a look. Okay, so these are the electronic components, but before we get to sorting them, these are the ones that you don't need to sort. And these are the fuses. We're not going to need these until we're done the build. And if you're in a different region than North America or a different voltage, this value is going to be different right here. Don't worry, we'll send you the correct one. It's just going to look different on it. Yeah, and the schematic will help you with that as well and tell you which fuse uh, you need for your, your region. Okay, so some components really easy to sort. The electrolytic capacitors, they say right on them what they are and you can label a spot on your egg carton for them. The diodes, there's only one kind. And the coupling capacitors, same thing. But for the resistors, we need to measure them to figure out where they belong. So you want to grab your multimeter. This is one of our basic standard ones here. And some clips if you have them, but don't worry if you just have normal probes, you can still use those. And you want to switch it into ohm function and test each one of the resistors and figure out what their value is. Yeah, now the, the blue uh, coated resistors are metal film and they're plus and minus one percent that's their that's their value tolerance and I think we have some power resistors in here in the sort so power resistors are uh, plus or minus five percent now we test and match critical resistors in uh, in your kit but there's quite a few resistors who have very high values um, such as the 680K, that it really doesn't matter uh, if they're um, higher or lower a little bit because 680,000 ohms is just such a high value that essentially you just need to be in the ballpark. And it, and it's at an, in a portion of the circuit where it's, it doesn't matter if it's off by yeah. a bit. Now, the interesting thing with resistors is that the uh, smaller the value usually the tighter the tolerance and when you get up to very high values like 680,000 ohms the because it's plus or minus one percent um, they tend to actually have uh, looser values and they might be slightly outside of their spec mm -hmm. when but, it's important though we match them for you yeah so these guys right here are testing at 10k and you have to be careful about auto ranging on these meters because there are some resistor values values here that are very close to each other. So you might have something like a 200K and a 200R. And they may both show as 200 on here, but you have to pay attention to that last symbol. Yeah, and a 200R, the R is just short form for resistance. And it's just the way of writing out without using the symbol, the ohm symbol. Mm -hmm. So um, 200R is 200 ohms. Uh, 200K is 200 kilo ohms. So that- 200,000 ohms. Yeah, and uh, 200 meg, well, there is no such thing. At least we've never had a 200 meg. Well, they probably exist, but that would be 200 million ohms. Yeah, yeah. So, and you would see on an auto ranging meter, you would see an M. Okay, all right, so go ahead and sort your components by value and by size. Make sure you mark down what their wattage ratings are. There's uh, four values for the resistors. We've got five watts, two watts, one watts and quarter watts. Here. And they're easy to figure out because the quarter watt, of course, is the lowest power capability. 
and it's the smallest it's the smallest and as you go up to the one watt they get bigger and of course the two watts you can see you can easily tell the difference they're about twice the size of a two watt and a one watt so and then the five watts are green so that helps them stand out and they're <laughs> and they're big monsters yeah yeah so okay. getting getting organized is going to make a huge difference in how how well the build goes later on but this is really getting boring charles how about we start building